Welcome back to the Van Diemen Formula Ford restoration. And on today's episode, it's all about the fuel system. Now that we have the engine and gearbox fitted to this car, the next thing we have to put in is the fuel tank. And this is what the fuel tank looks for this car. It's a bladder type fuel tank. It's, it's very soft and squishy. And this goes between the driver and the engine. And then this is surrounded by aluminum paneling to not only give it protection, but to help it hold its shape. The reason it's located in the middle of the car is it's the best place for weight distribution. Very low, very central. This is a changing weight load. You'll start a race with a full tank and finish with an empty tank. So that 10 or 15 kilos that you get variation in weight, if it was somewhere else, it would affect the handling. You'd, you'd start off with a certain car and finish with a different car, but being so central, it has very little influence on the handling of the car. The fuel tank that we were supplied with the car was um, incorrectly stored at best. It was all cracked, it actually leaked quite badly. This, you can see the filler and everything on it. It's actually got a cutout on this side for where the gear shifter goes down the side of the car. And even in some of the paneling, you can see the hole where the gear shifter goes through. And that's why we need to fit this thing straight up. It needs to be the absolute next thing we can fit. So then we can keep assembling the components around it. Before we rush in and fit these components to the car, we need to deal with the aluminum work. It's in pretty good condition, but we need to clean it up and make it look pretty. The rest of the car is looking sensational as it is and we don't want this to be the bit that lets it down. This is exactly how we had it, it fitted to the car. It's got insulation on the back, more to keep the heat away from the, the driver and the fuel tank than anything else. This bit here is, goes about where the headrest is in the car. It's right up high, but it's the firewall between the driver, the fuel tank and the engine. Once again, insulation on the back. But we need to pretty these parts up. We can't go fitting ratty bits like this into our very nice looking Formula Ford. So what we'll do now is we'll do a bit of surface refinishing. We'll clean them up. We might give them a polish and probably even seal it with a bit of clear paint. All those panels have come up really, really well. Not only have we refinished the, the aluminium side, it's got a two pack clear on it to preserve it from any future corrosion, fingerprints or whatever, just to keep it looking sharp. You don't see a whole lot of it, but what you do see will certainly stand out. The main part gets the driver's seat on it. So once, once again, you're not going to see it, but if it looked really ratty, it'd stand out around the edges. We've updated the insulation. The insulation that was on there was probably cutting edge 20 years ago. It was falling apart due to be replaced. So now it's got this lovely gold finish on it and anything facing the engine or facing the heat has now got insulation on it. The top driver, it's, this one's about where the, uh, the headrest of the driver is. Same, looks really nice, also insulated. This bottom one, it goes to the engine side. It's got the fuel fitting comes out of the middle. The gear shifter goes through that top corner. On the inside, it's got a foam tape to protect the fuel tank bladder from where the fixtures come through in, in the corners. They've got bolts and they've got captive nuts in this panel. And we don't want those rubbing through the bladder of the fuel cell. That wouldn't end up well for anybody. We are just about ready to start fitting all these components into the car. But before we do, we've had to flush the fuel bladder out. As much as this bladder is better than the one we had with the car, it's still not perfect. It's been in storage for a long time and the fuel cell foam inside this bladder had come apart. So we've had to flush maybe 20 liters of fuel through this to get it clean. 
What does a fuel cell foam look like when it comes apart? Here's a shot. Now it's going to block up absolutely everything. It'll block up a filter in no time and will certainly block up the fuel pump and the carby. No trouble at all and it takes a whole lot of work to clean it out. So making sure that this thing is clean now is a whole lot easier than trying to clean it in the car. This actually never ran a fuel filter back in the day. We, we, we just didn't. But I think for the, this time round, we will fit a fuel filter and we'll fit a, a reasonably large and a finer filter just to capture anything that may be in there or may get in there in the future from filling up from dirty fuel cans or whatever. But we don't want to be chasing random fuel blockages if we can eliminate that at this point. The exact location where the fuel cell fits is in this little triangular section here. Driver sits on here and that's the engine in there. So like I was saying, perfect location for the fuel cell for weight distribution. The first bit to go in is this panel here. It's got to go in there first before we can get the fuel cell in because it is quite a tight fit. This panel is two pieces to get it in the car because this is a neat fit around the tubes. So we need to get this in here. This is riveted in when it goes in, rivets to the chassis and then the aluminium panels essentially bolt together. So it's not a bad setup, but I'm hoping we can get this in the car fixed off and then still have enough room to push the fuel cell in there. Now keep in mind, I didn't pull it apart. The last time I had this apart was many, many, many years ago. So I'm sort of winging it. I'm hoping I remember how to do it, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Now that the engine firewall section is in and fitted off, I'm gonna to try to get the front section in. I'm hoping I can squeeze it in there. It goes on the inside of the tube, so it's actually quite a tight fit. And then hopefully I've still got enough room to push that bladder through the middle. The space we have to work with is certainly getting smaller and smaller. We've only have got this little area here to jam this big thing into. So I'm gonna come in from, so I might even come in from this side and just see if we can start to, start to squeeze it in there. It is, it is quite soft, it is quite squishy, but we need to make sure we don't catch it on any edges. And also we get it sitting in the right place. When we actually get it in there, we can fold it back into into all the corners. Squeezing that in there. And probably the hardest bit looking at that will be to get the filler tube into where it needs to be. Well, it's in there. Now we've just got to fold it back out into where it needs to be. Fill a tube probably first. We'll get that back up in there. Certainly help that top corner to pop out to where it should be. The bottom corner, just really work it down into where it needs to be. Now once this fuel bladder is in, triangular panels bolt in the side, then, then that's it. It's, um, it's in there where it should be. The relief in the corner of the bag, which I showed you earlier, is for where the gear shift goes through this section here. But we're almost there. I'll just jump around the other side and I'll keep pushing and pulling it into its, uh, into its correct place. Now that that's in place and it's all pushed into the corners and where it's supposed to be, I can put these end covers on. Then we can work on 
fitting the fuel filler, its brackets, and then getting a fuel line on it. I'm gonna keep this fuel bladder as full as I can for as long as I can. I don't want it to dry out, I don't want it to perish, and they, they de definitely survive a lot nicer with fuel actually inside them. So as soon as we get this together, I'm gonna fill it full of fuel to look after it and also to make sure it doesn't leak. If it's got a leak now and I've got to pull all this apart again, well, now's the time to do it before we start fitting more stuff around it and it becomes an even bigger job than it should have been. The fuel tank and all the aluminium work is now in place. And I was going to put a good fuel filter on it but I've thought against that what I will do is put on a cheap plastic see-through filter just for initial startup. We'll run this thing for a bit before it goes to the track. Before it hits the track, we'll put a proper fuel filter on it. But if I can have a see-through fuel filter on it just for the first couple of starts up so I can see how clean the fuel tank actually is and I can see what sort of debris I'm getting in here. These are only a couple of dollars each. If I block one up, I'll throw it in the bin and put another one on but we do have a good fuel filter for it and I will put it on before it hits the track, but I think this will be the ticket for the initial startup and for the first five or 10 liters that this thing gets pumped through it before it makes it to the racetrack. The fuel line is now in place for initial startup. It's a temporary home, but it's in there nonetheless, and we'll fix that off before we hit the track. Next thing we need to fit up is the fuel filler. The original location for the fuel filler is between the front of the engine and the back of the fuel tank. And it was a really tight squeeze to the point where I couldn't get my big mug hand in there. So we've actually extended the fuel filler, brought it up to somewhere where I can get to it, and where it's, it's just a whole lot easier to work with, it's a bit more accessible. And you can see the fuel coming up the spout before it overflows all over the engine. We found the bracket for it, the original bracket. I'm pretty sure I know who made that. Wall, we miss you. We'll give that a paint, we'll give this a tidy up. I'm pretty sure we need to get this front headrest panel in bef because that bracket fits to it. So we'll also, we'll put this in, it fits just in the top there. So we'll get that in. We'll clean this stuff up and then hopefully it'll all come together and we can remember where the bolts go. The fuel filler is now in there and fixed off. And no, I didn't need to put that panel in. It doesn't mount to it, but that panel had to go in anyway. So it's another job off the list. The breather hose and the fuel lines are run. I'm not tying them off at the moment because we have a heap of cabling to go down the side of the car anyway. We've got battery cables and we've got brake rear brake lines, stuff like that. So we'll bundle all that together when we get it in there. But now that that's fixed off, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to put fuel in it. If we can pour fuel on the top and it doesn't come out the bottom, we've had a pretty good day. But I want to store this thing with fuel in it. And realistically, we are not that far away from a fire up. So having fuel sit in it is certainly not going to hurt it anyway. It might not seem like a big deal, but I can't even imagine the last time this car had fuel in it. We've, we've put fuel in, it's not running out the bottom, everything's looking really good, there's no leaks, it doesn't smell. We've just popped those covers off a little bit to make sure, but everything looks really cool. But it's, it's, been, it's been maybe 10 years since this car's had fuel in it, so it's, it's quite a large milestone, and I'm really pumped to get some more components on this car. I, 
I think for the next episode, we, we might do the controls. We'll get the gear stick, the steering column and stuff like that in. Work on the front of the car a little bit, but that's it for this episode. I'm wrapped with where we're at. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. See you on the next episode.